the Silver Bridge crossed over the Ohio River, linking Point Pleasant, West Virginia with Gallipolis, Ohio. On December 15, 1967, during rush hour traffic, the suspension bridge collapsed sending cars into the icy depths of the Ohio River. 46 people would die in this tragic man-made disaster. In 1975, John Kill would write a book, linking this disaster forever to bizarre and terrifying sightings of a bizarre creature. From November 15, 1966 to the same day as the bridge collapse, people living in the Point Pleasant area saw a winged creature with large, red, glowing eyes. A creature known as the Mothman. Before we begin, my lord has this been the most requested video I have had since I announced cryptids back in January. I was always planning on doing it, but every time I mentioned it, the first thing people asked was, Are you gonna cover Mothman? Yes, dear watchers, I am. For all of you who really wanted me to talk about this, this is for you. But before I go into the obvious sightings, I need to talk about John Keel. John Keel was a ufologist and wrote a book on Mothman. This book was called The Mothman Prophecies. More on that book later. But why did I bring him up now? He had some interesting theories about Mothman that is worth talking about in this section. He believed that he found evidence that being similar to Mothman had been spotted well before 1966. According to John Keel, in 1870 on Coney Island, a large black humanoid with bat-like wings was spotted flying in the sky. Onlookers supposedly saw this creature as it swooped and flew around before disappearing into the distance. But you know what? I'm saying that was the Jersey Devil. Why? Because I want to. The Jersey Devil just wanted a Coney dog. On September 12th of 1880, a similar creature was supposedly spotted in the same location. But onlookers thought it was just a man with a homemade hang glider. In 1905 in California, people supposedly reported seeing a really large white bird. I'm going to call it now that it was probably a bird and not a bird-like man. Apparently, sightings of these natures were pretty common, but drew little attention. That was until November 12, 1966. That was when five men digging a grave near Clendon and Rutz, Virginia saw something. That night while working, the five men looked to the sky and saw it. A large, brown, winged creature had lifted off from the trees and into the sky. The men claimed that what they saw was no bird. It was manlike. On November 15, 1966, in Salem, West Virginia, Noel Partridge was settling in to watch television. As he was enjoying the evening's entertainment, the television began acting weird. The picture became distorted and fuzzy. Outside, he heard a loud, screeching sound. His dog, a German Shepherd named Bandit, began barking. Scared, he cautiously walked to the door with a flashlight in hand. Scanning in the dark, at first he saw nothing, but then, his flashlight shone on two large red orbs near his barn. That was when Bandit took off running towards those orbs. The orbs were eyes of a large creature, one that terrified Newell Partridge. He rushed inside to get his gun, but he stopped himself from going back out. A feeling of dread had washed over him, paralyzing him in his home, and Bandit didn't return. That night, Newell slept with his gun propped up against his bed. And the next day, Newell went out looking for his dog, following the dog's tracks to the barn, where the tracks disappeared. A 110-pound dog disappeared without a trace. The tracks indicating that whatever Bandit had chased after, and what had terrified Newell, had picked up the dog and flown away with it. Bandit was never seen again. On the same night as Newell's sighting, 116 miles away in Point Pleasant, is the most famous sighting. 
Roger and Linda Scarberry were driving near the ruins of the West Virginia Ordnance Works in a 1957 Chevy Bel Air with Steve and Mary Mallett. Why they were there is up for debate. Finding a makeout spot or drag racing are the common suggestions. But the reasons for them being there on that road that night is not important. What is, is what they saw. As they passed the old North Power Plant, Linda happened to look out and saw something she couldn't explain. Large red glowing eyes in the road in front of them. Linda screamed at the sight as Roger stopped the car in front of the being. A seven foot tall creature with large red eyes was standing in front of them. The headlights from the car seemed to scare it away. Its wings spread and it took off into the sky. Roger put the car in drive and took off down the road, making it to Highway 62. But when he looked in the rearview mirror, he saw it coming towards them. Flying fast and gaining, the creature chased the car. Roger pressed his foot on the gas all the way to the floor, speeding the car up to 100 miles an hour. But the creature kept gaining on them. In their fear, they were able to make it back to Point Pleasant and went straight to the police station to report what just happened. Telling their story to Sheriff George Johnson and Deputy Miller Halstead. Sheriff Johnson had known the four all their lives and knew they wouldn't make up a story such as this. So he sent out police to search the area, but they found nothing. The only evidence of a creature chasing them was on the 57 Chevy's roof. Deep in the black paint were scratch marks. Linda Scarberry would end up in the hospital soon after. She suffered a nervous breakdown. When asked about it later, Roger Scarberry stated of the event of that night, I am a hard guy to scare, but last night I was getting the hell out of there. On November 16, 1966, the Point Pleasant Register ran an article about this event, titled, Couple Sees Man-Sized Bird, Creature, Something. This was the article that Newell Partridge ended up reading on November 17th. The description of the creature seemed eerily familiar to him, but what caught his attention was one of the things Roger Scarberry claimed to have seen that night. Roger claimed that before he saw the creature, he noticed the body of a large dog on the side of the road. 46 miles south of Point Pleasant, in St. Albans, West Virginia, there was another sighting. Also on November 16th, Raymond Walmsley, his wife, and Marcella Bennett, along with Marcella's infant daughter, Tina, were getting ready to go visit friends. As the group moved to the car, something jumped out from behind it, darting straight into the air and flying off. The three adults rushed into the house with Marcella carrying her daughter. They called 911, but as they turned, they saw the creature at the window, red eyes looking at them. On November 26th, Ruth Foster was in her home in Charleston, West Virginia, when she noticed something outside on her lawn. Going to investigate, she stood face to face with the creature. She got a good look at it. Ruth Foster's description of the creature was as follows. Glowing poppy red eyes and nothing else. No nose or mouth. But Mothman has been described as bipedal. Six to seven feet tall with a wingspan of 10 feet. And the wings are not moth-like. In fact, the name Mothman does not even make sense for this creature. The wings are either bird-like or bat-like. It is sometimes described as not having a head, but instead two glowing red eyes on its chest. Others claim it looks like a humanoid owl. Mothman can fold its wings behind it, and when it walks, it is said to shuffle like a penguin. When it takes flight, it seems that the wings do not flap, as if they are just there for stability. But it can take off like a helicopter directly into the air. Other interesting claims of the creature is that it flies in complete silence. No sounds of giant wings flapping. So why do they call it Mothman if it resembles more an owl or a bat? Well, the most popular answer is that it's named after a character from the 1960s Batman show. Problem with that is, there is no Mothman character in that show. There is a killer moth in Batman and was introduced in the comics in 1951. And he did show up in the 1960s Batman show. But here's a kicker with that. That episode never aired. In fact, the episode didn't see official release until the DVD set in 2014. So it may have been influenced by a character in the Batman mythos, but I don't know if I believe that. I'm just gonna guess that Owlman was taken. Sightings of the creature continued throughout 1967. But weirdly, the sightings tapered off after December 15th, 1967, when the Silver Bridge collapsed. The Silver Bridge was opened on May 30th, 1928. The bridge was designed in a time when cars were much lighter, and also a time when cars were not used as heavily. As time went on, 
Bumper to bumper traffic was common on the bridge and cars went from being 1,500 pounds on average to 4,000 pounds. And that is not even counting trucks, which weighed a lot more. On December 15th, rush hour traffic was heavy. Those who survived claimed that the bridge began to move, shaking and rocking, and then the bridge collapsed. 46 people died, with two never being found. The collapse was due to the bridge not being built to handle the strain of heavy traffic and poor upkeep. An eye bar on the bridge snapped, causing the collapse. It was after this that the Mothman sighting stopped. At first, there was really no link to these two incidents. And a lot of people, along with me, full disclosure, think that the sightings stopped because more people were focused on the loss of life to care about some strange creature that filled people with dread. Not John Keel, though. As I mentioned before, John Keel was a ufologist, and he researched the Mothman sightings, and he thought to himself that the bridge collapse wasn't a coincidence. He linked the two, stating that Mothman was a harbinger of disaster. In his book, The Mothman Prophecies, he claimed that the Mothman was there to warn of impending doom. John Keel wrote this book in 1975, and his book has pretty much linked the two events permanently. There were some reports that stated that people saw Mothman on or around the bridge when the bridge collapsed, but hard to tell if those are credible. So was there any sightings after the Silver Bridge collapse? Well, yes and no. Yes, there was a sighting reported in 2016 in Point Pleasant, and a photo was taken which was debunked as a bird carrying a snake. And of course, you have many shows like Expedition X, which states that he has been seen in the area, but, again, can't find any info besides those shows on the authenticity of those claims. There were also claims that he showed up before 9-11, the Fukushima nuclear disaster, Chernobyl, and others. But I can't find anything to back up this claim other than stuff on the internet, so I'm going to chalk it up to internet tales. As you can tell from the Jersey Devil and Alien Big Cats, I'm a skeptical person when it comes to the paranormal. I don't fault people for believing in such things, but I want to post this clip really quick. This is from Mothman. America's Notorious Winged Monster, an episode of Monstrum on the Story Channel. There's only one Mothman and there's only one Point Pleasant. People were really interested in that, although I wasn't, and actually the town wasn't. The town didn't believe it, although there, were, there kept on being sightings. The newspaper kept writing about it, but it was mostly tongue-in-cheek. It was all, all that, but frankly still is today for most. One time someone said, I'd, I'd like, we'd like to talk to some people that don't believe in the Mothman. I said, pick anyone on Main Street. This fine gentleman is named Denny Bellamy, who earlier in the episode had explained that he was in third grade when the first sightings were reported. Point Pleasant isn't a big town, so everyone knows everyone. And according to him, no one in Point Pleasant believes the Mothman is real. In fact, here's how he described it earlier in the episode. My neighbors saw it, said there's a large, there's a six foot bird with big red eyes and massive wings chasing cars in a TNT and in fact it kept up with Roger Scarberry's 57 Chevy. Notice what he said, a large bird, not a humanoid bird-like creature, a large bird. It's things like this that interest me, trying to find out what it is, trying to solve a mystery. So let's look at what Mothman could be. Get ready for deja vu. Because much like the Jersey Devil, the explanations for what it could be are a sandhill crane or a type of owl. Let's first look at the sandhill crane. Standing at an average of 4 foot 6 inches, the sandhill crane has red feathers over its eyes. Their call is loud and trumpeting. Their wingspan is an impressive range of 5 to 7 feet. But they do not have anything that could scratch a 57 Chevy. And they are not particularly hostile. They would rather fly away than attack. But there is something in the Point Pleasant area that checks the majority of the boxes. Not all of them, but a good number of them. The Barred Owl. When the light is flashed in their eyes, the eyes glow red. They are nocturnal. All owls fly silently due to specialized wing feathers. They have long talons they use to grip prey. And they're fiercely territorial. Oh, they will attack you if they feel threatened. But they are not that big. Average of 25 inches in height and a wingspan of 49 inches. Which is nothing compared to Mothman. Maybe science can help. 
Let's go back to where the most famous sightings took place, West Virginia Ordnance Works. What do we know of this place? Well, a couple of things. It was a World War II munitions plant. It is said that materials used to make the two atomic bombs dropped on Japan were manufactured there. It was shuttered after World War II. But when it was in service, what was happening there was so top secret that workers took buses with blacked out windows to get there. And where there's a plant that might have had chemicals and radiation inside, there's ground seepage. And animals can be mutated by such things over time. Just look at Chernobyl. Mutations caused by radiation can vary. Some don't survive, others do. What Mothman might actually be is a bird that is abnormally large due to mutations. Creepy thought, huh? I honestly have no idea. I don't know what kind of animal can pick up and fly while holding a 110 pound dog. Maybe some of the events didn't happen like they were described. Maybe they were embellished. Maybe it was just a regular owl or a sandhill crane. I don't think it was supernatural or paranormal. I think there's a logical explanation, but what that is, I'm not sure. But what I do know is whatever Mothman really was, the answer has to be out there. In 2002, Richard Gere starred in a movie called The Mothman Prophecies. For reference, never seen this movie. And judging from the Rotten Tomatoes score, not many people liked it. But it kind of is important because also in 2002, Point Pleasant decided to cash in on the popularity of Mothman. The Mothman Festival brings in a lot of revenue to the town. And there's even a museum dedicated to the Mothman. But it mostly features things from the movie. Every third weekend in September, the town becomes Mothman Central. There's even a statue there that's supposed to depict Mothman, but it doesn't look anything like the descriptions. Kind of looks like a Marvel villain. Either way, Mothman keeps Point Pleasant alive, so I cannot fault them for cashing in, even if a majority of the locals think it's BS. Next week, Lake Champlain is situated on the borders of New York and Vermont, and for centuries, locals claimed to see something in the water. Much like its more famous kin in Loch Ness, a picture was taken of this strange creature that looks like a dinosaur. But is it real, or is it a hoax like the Loch Ness photographs? Next week, we look at the Lake Champlain monster, also known as Champ. Then on Monday, October 31st, Sasquatch, Skunk Ape, Yeti, or as we all have come to know it, Bigfoot. Till then, 